Hi everyone, my name is Michael Muhlenbein. I'm a professor of anthropology here at Baylor University. Uh, this is the approaching the end of my third year here. Just to give you a little background about myself, I was born and raised in Chicago, went to Northwestern University. If you've ever seen the movie Caddyshack, there's a Caddy scholarship and it's real. And I took it to Northwestern, where I was originally intending and majoring in jazz performance. Things changed. I had always been pre-med, but ended up switching to environmental science because of a professor that I liked, and picked up anthropology as well for a double major. I wanted to do something in human health, but didn't know if medical school was that solution for me. So I ended up going to Tulane University School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine in New Orleans, Louisiana, where I ended up doing a Master's of Science in Public Health in Tropical Medicine, which is essentially uh, similar to infectious disease epidemiology. I was planning on going to the Gambia to work with the Peace Corps, in the WHO's New Guinea Worm Eradication Program, but ended up meeting my would-be wife and not wanting to leave her for two and a half years, I decided to stay. Her degree in EPI was a little longer than mine, so I ended up doing another Master's of Science Public Health in Biostatistics. It was too late to apply to a PhD program at that time, so I stayed there for an extra year. When we were both done, we moved to New Haven, Connecticut, where I did my Master's of Philosophy and Doctor of Philosophy in Biological Anthropology at Yale University. I finished there in 2004. My dissertation work was looking at diseases in chimpanzees, malaria in humans, and uh, what increases the likelihood of getting an infection and having a worse infection if you have higher testosterone levels. Because it does appear to be that males with higher testosterone seem to be a little more susceptible to certain diseases, infectious ones that is, uh, whereas women are susceptible to, uh, more susceptible to chronic diseases like uh, autoimmune disease. So I finished in 04 and my first job was a tenure track assistant professor at the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee. We were there for three years. My wife went to Marquette in the evenings to get her MBA and she was eventually hired by Eli Lilly, the pharmaceutical company in Indianapolis. And I became an assistant professor then at Indiana University in Bloomington. I was tenured there in 2012. We had three beautiful children there. And in 2015, I was looking for opportunities at other places. And we ended up moving to the University of Texas at San Antonio, in part because it was a much smaller department. Indiana was a very big department, a lot of faculty, a lot of students, and I wanted something um, more focused and more of a family-like atmosphere, and I found that at UT San Antonio. I was there for only a few months before I was contacted by a few colleagues at Baylor to come up and give a lecture and to also give an informal analysis of where I thought the Department of Anthropology could be positioned in the future here. And I did. I came up and I fell in love and they liked my ideas and eventually offered me a job as chair of the department, which I began in August of 2017. I specifically came to Baylor uh, because of the opportunity of building up a small department of anthropology with a singular focus that is a focus specifically on the anthropology of health which is a combination of a lot of different things from 
traditional medical anthropology and biological anthropology, human biology, what you call biomedical anthropology, biocultural anthropology, in general, a focus on all things health-related that anthropologists can contribute to. And we do that by using a variety of methods, both qualitative and quantitative, to understand the human condition. And when I say health, that is very broadly conceived, including uh, the environment. So I came, and so far we have made two successful hires of human biologists, and we're slowly growing the program. We're not doing that at the expense of existing faculty with their excellent expertise in uh, social, cultural, environmental, anthropology, and archaeology, as well as forensic science. We have a very large minor, over 150 students in forensic science right now. But the future we see for positioning Baylor anthropology as competitive with other R1 institutions and other top anthropology programs. We wish to focus now more on health, human health. And we think we can accomplish that through a number of additional hires, as well as a graduate program. That is a PhD program focusing again on the anthropology of health. And that has been what I've been working on for the past few years. So my work, as when I finished my dissertation, I was invited to attend a conference in Leipzig, Germany on diseases in great apes because of my degree in tropical medicine in part. And I met a veterinarian who was working in Sabah, which is the northern Malaysian state in Borneo home to about 10,000 of the world's remaining orangutans. And he invited me to come out and develop a field laboratory to better monitor the health of those uh, endangered animals. And I did. And we started doing it, working together for years. And whereas a lot of people were focusing on the potential of disease transmission from wild animals, to humans, what you call spillover. They were largely doing it within the context of bushmeat, that is the consumption of wild animals, and largely in West Africa and different parts of Asia. And where I was working, I noticed uh, not a lot of bushmeat, in part because the, it's a Muslim country, but a lot of tourism. And so that's kind of where I found my niche, which is looking at the risks of disease transmission between wild animals and humans in relation to travel and tourism. So as you know, we are in the middle of the COVID-19, or more technically the SARS-CoV-2 virus outbreak pandemic now which is why I'm coming to you from my uh, five-year-old daughter's bedroom. I'd like to say that it's ironic, but it's not. It's sad that last semester I taught One Health. And One Health is the idea that human, animal, environmental health are all interconnected. If you change one, it affects another. And a great example of this is the emergence of infectious diseases from wild animals, which is where SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID-19 disease, originated from. They're not confident yet, but probably a bat reservoir, just like the original SARS virus, and possibly passing through other animals. I've seen a paper reports it with snakes, another now with pangolins, um, we're not sure yet, but it's undoubtedly from a wild animal source. We've known the threat of this for hundreds of years. We've recognized that diseases spill over from wild animals 
into humans. And they also go in the reverse direction from humans to wild animals. And that's where I've been concentrating a lot of my work within One Health. We actually just last semester, when I was teaching the class, ended up doing a survey of about 1,300 undergraduate students on the Baylor campus. Uh, that's about 10% of the undergrad population. And it was on their perceptions of risk associated with contact with wild animals and disease transmission, which is why I wanted to say that it was ironic that COVID-19 appeared during this time or at the end of the survey. But again, irony would not be the right word given the lives lost already. We're expecting at least one third of the entire human population to become infected, maybe even a half. And it's going to happen for a long time. It's going to happen in waves, uh, which is why we're self-isolating. I'm in week three now, uh, especially because I've got young kids, uh, ages 10, 7, 5, and 3, which makes it kind of interesting trying to get work done at home because I'm not qualified in homeschooling or child psychology. Even though I'm a parent, it doesn't qualify you to do these things. So, back to One Health. This is one of the major courses that I teach. I also teach something called evolutionary medicine, which is looking at the evolutionary history of the human organism and how understanding evolutionary theory contributes to medical research and practices. Our Department of Anthropology offers a lot of health-related courses. Uh, besides my two, we have human biological variation, we have human evolutionary anatomy, we have osteology. We've got lots and lots of options, which is why we have a lot of pre-med students in our major. And there's some evidence out there which suggests that you're actually higher likelihood of getting into med school if you have a mix of degrees outside the traditional disciplines of biology and chemistry. And that's one thing that I love about the department here is our offerings, our future focus, and the fact that we really, really stress undergraduate research too. I just mentioned the, the survey work in my One Health course. Uh, this will be the first year in 15 years that I haven't brought on a group of undergraduates overseas to conduct research, specifically surveying tourists about their knowledge, attitudes, and practices towards engaging in contact with wild animals. The idea that what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? It, it essentially means that people do not behave the same when they travel as they do at home. And there is loss of situational awareness, loss of inhibition, and you have increased risk of disease. You have an increasing number of selfie-related deaths, many of these from falling, but many of these also because of becoming getting too close to wild animals. So understanding those disease transmission risks in association with that change in attitude is really important for myself and a lot of the students that work in my laboratory. Other reasons why I think Baylor is the best fit for me is not simply because our focus on health, but our willingness to engage, really engage undergraduates with the needed mentoring time for developing the capability of doing research, not just me giving you a research project, but helping you to understand how research is generated from the basic ideas through uh, fulfillment of using different qualitative and quantitative measurements. Approximately half of the graduating seniors every year in the Department of Anthropology here will have conducted some type of research 
with a faculty member or on their own as either a part of an honors thesis or as a university scholar or just because they wanted to get the experience because it's not just your GPA that's going to move you forward to med school or public health or veterinary school or wherever you want to go but it's also the other experiences that you have while you're here and that's really where Baylor shines. I really appreciate you listening to me. Thanks a lot. I hope you consider coming to Baylor, staying at Baylor. And if you ever drop by the Mars McLean Science Building, you'll find me in room 257. You can also shoot me an email. The department website is easy to find on the Baylor homepage. So keep in touch. Thanks. Bye-bye.